He has that ability to break his opponent. It's his will that he imposes on his opponent as he's training. That's what separates him from anybody else we've ever been around. You want to get in shape for your fight, but you also want to feel good about it. And you want to make sure your uh, your core is getting good, your agility, your speed. A lot of people think strength training is just you know going in there and getting your heart rate up, which it is. But you know, I obviously do a lot of agility, a lot of speed, and, and that comes into play, especially you know for footwork, for boxing, and, and stand up, and and then the core stuff for jujitsu. So a lot of it goes hand in hand. To, you know, the martial art too. You've told me a, a number of times that I've interviewed you that you don't have to motivate yourself to go to to go to training. Has that changed? As you get older? No, it really hasn't. You know, uh, I don't think, you know, getting up, no one likes to get up early, but uh, once I'm up, I'm good to go. I'm, you know, it's, just, it's, it's what I do. You know, I had to motivate myself to go to, to go to work when I was a plumber, but I don't have to motivate myself anymore now. It's great working with a guy that, that you don't, you don't need to push, he's self-motivated. You know, he, he amazes you every time he comes in here, you know. Put together things I think is, it's gonna be tough. You know, like, all right, I can beat him this time. And he, he comes through and he tears, tears through the workout and, and uh, times makes it look easy. He shows his heart in his training, um, and now everybody's getting to see in his fights too, but we, we get to see that all the time. In Jiu-Jitsu, most people can have more or less find their own way with strength and condition. You know, there's, there's many uh, different theories as to what is the optimal program, but, uh, but everyone, I think, just finds their own way. Some people have their theories, other people go either directions. It's kind of personal. You go talk to a boxing guy, like an old boxing trainer, they, they don't like their guys touching weights at all, you know, because they don't want to get stiff. So in, re in, in MMA, you kind of kind of find it in between, in between wrestling, between boxing, because, you know, you want to still use a little stuff to get strength because we are grappling. We also want to be fast and, and, and loose, too, because of the boxing and, and stand-up aspect. I'm always changing things up. I'm trying to find new techniques. It's a sport where your opponent's goal is to put you in a, in a bad position, where you don't have a lot of leverage. Traditional strength training is the exact opposite. You put your body in the best position possible to put as, push as much weight as possible. So you almost have to throw some of the science out the window and some of the traditional uh, you know, textbook stuff out the window. And you got to be creative. You got to kind of look at the biomechanics of the sport and, and go outside of the, the normal um, you know, strength training realm. Good. So first time straight through, second time two ladders in between each. Third time, four ladders. Brian does a great job of, of you know, putting in workouts that simulate, you know, certain fight situations or certain jiu-jitsu situations. And, uh, you know, that definitely helps because uh, I feel like your core, you know, that, that's where most of your power is from. You know, you can bench and do all that stuff, but if your core is weak, you know, a, a good wrestler or jiu-jitsu guy is going to expose that right away. So stuff we do, like with those kettlebells, the sit-ups, like that, that's really, you know, you want to make the middle of your body as strong as you can because that, that's the most powerful part of your body. In jiu-jitsu, you need to be able to, to press, you know, drive your hips up and rotate through the shoulders and um, to be able to bump somebody off you. Um, so one of the kettlebell exercises that we did was laying flat on the ground, um, being able to explode from the ground, rotate the shoulders, pop the hips up, um, very similar to, 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 you know, what you would see on the ground. Another one, you know, some, some pulling motions on the ground where you're, you're posted on your hands and you're trying to, to, to pull your body weight or keep, you know, keep pressure on a guy. You, know, you, need to, you need to, you know, incorporate those things too. Yeah, for me, you know, staying conditioned is extremely important. Obviously, it gets you ready for the fight, you know, cardio-wise, but also gets me ready for my next workout. You know, I want to, you don't want to leave strength and condition feeling like you're not ready for your next, you're too tired for your next workout or you're not good for your next work. You want to feel better leaving here. And that's what we try to do, you know. So there'll be some days where, you know, we're going to grind and you're getting there just to, just to get the, your heart rate up and, and, and feel like hell, you know, feel like you've been in a fight. But there's sometimes where you're in here just trying to, you know, loosen everything up, getting everything firing. So, you know, for your next workout, you're ready to go. I think a lot of strength programs and, and uh, conditioning programs lack some of the speed drills and agility drills where we do that a lot. And for someone like myself where I use footwork, you know, it's a big part of how I fight. It's uh, it's important that I, you know, I train it. I can't just expect to go on a fight and all of a sudden have fast feet. You have to, you know, apply it in every practice, you know, and in conditioning as well. Last week I was fortunate enough to go out to California. Ricardo's uh, 
you know, run a couple of Gracie Baja schools out there, and uh, this guy Gavin, a sports science lab, you know, got hooked up with him and introduced me to some of this stuff. It's like pool work, you do a little resistance. It's, uh, it's kind of low impact, but uh, you get a lot out of it. You're stretching and strengthening at the same time. If it's stuff that you can formulate into a fight, it's like throwing punches. You know, you get to use some explosion stuff, so, you know. You can do this before a workout to feel good or after a workout to feel good, too. So it's a, it's a pretty unique tool. We're professional athletes uh, now, and uh, as the sport is getting grown more and more, people aren't only training harder, they're training smarter. Just knowing that the guy I'm fighting across the country is, is probably doing the same stuff I am, it makes me want to do it a little bit harder. Uh, I still think I fought a pretty good fight last fight. Um, you know, Ben's obviously going to come in with a little adjustments, I'm going to come in with a little adjustments. It's about applying them at the right time and, and making some game time decisions, and just like I said, just being better. Were you impressed with his cardio? You know, I was... Uh, I wasn't surprised, you know, he comes to fight every time, he's always in good shape, so uh, it wasn't something I was surprised by. You gonna knock him out? I mean, I would love to, you know, again, I'm not big on, on predictions, but uh, I'm gonna be prepared to, to do it if I have to. Wrestling Jiu Jitsu, much different, but very similar. The one-on-one -on -one sports, it teaches you more than, than any team sport could. Jiu-Jitsu was introduced to the United States through mixed martial arts. When you're a brown belt under Ricardo, when do you get that black belt? What do you think you have to do to get that black belt? Submit Ben Henderson, maybe? 